on ne présente plus chez Aïe. Musicienne de renom, éternelle complice de Prince, que nous avons eu la chance de rencontrer lors de son dernier passage en France, si elle ne nous a pas autorisé à filmer, elle nous a tout de même donné une interview pleine de confessions totalement exclusives. Oh yeah, I can watch it, and I think I was crazy. <laughs> Absolutely. You saw, you saw the video clips and, oh, and yeah. the almost naked stuff. And oh yeah. No, it was, uh, you know, I always say this, like I took full responsibility that I created a monster, and it was my 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 doing, and yeah. no one else did, you know, it was like, this is what I wanted to do. No, nobody chose the, the outfit for you, you did everything? No, it's what I wanted to do. I, I, it's like, this is how I want to be. And, and, and I was talking to um, a lot of people and they said, well, what do you want to do? Or, well, I want to do this. And, and they said, well, that's kind of like, no one has ever done that. No one, there's never been a female timbali player, percussion player leading a band. That doesn't even exist. I said, okay, well then I will be the first. You know, and, and, and it's like, are there any rules? Well, no, there's no rules. Oh, you shouldn't have never told me that. You know, so even doing my record, I never went to the record company to say, what do you guys want me to play? What is the marketing? I turned in my record done. The album cover was done. This I shot it this way. This is what I want you guys to do. And and the only argument that I got with the record company at the time was they wanted Bella St. Mark to be the first single and Prince and I wanted Glamour Life. And they said, we want Bella St. Mark. We fought for Glamour Life to be the first single. That was the only thing. But other than that, every album that I've done, I've come up with a team of people to, instead of the record company because I know me as an artist and what I want to do and you can't, I can't talk to you and say, okay, what do you want me to do and you don't even know me, you know, it, it was it's like I always wanted to kind of do this, you know, so um, when they said that there's no limit, I could do whatever, so I just kept going and at one point even Prince looked at me, he's like, you sure you want to do this? And I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah, I took it to the extreme and then after a while I went, I wanted, this is not right. I had got to change some stuff, you know. So I learned, and um, it was okay. She's got big thoughts, big dreams, and a big brown Mercedes again. What I think this girl, she really wants to be in love with a man. She wants to leave the glamorous life. She I mean, definitely for me, I grew up in an environment in the Bay Area where um, it was about bands, so I wanted a band. I didn't want to just be the sole artist. That's not who I wanted to be. I wanted it to be a band, a look, and, and so part of the um, auditions for the band was anybody who came to audition. We auditioned about 200 people the first time. And if I thought that you were good enough to play in the band, that you were versatile enough to play different types of music, my question to you was, do you drink? Do you do drugs? You can't smoke. Um, if it's if you're going to be in my band, you have to sing, you have to dance. I might change your hair. I might change the color. I might add hair. I might cut your hair. This is what you're going to have a different look. I already knew it was a concept that it needed to be a band. So that was done purposely for me because I wanted it to look like a group, like a band. It wasn't the focus didn't have to just be on me. And that's what I was telling the band. It's like we're a team. This is together. You know, um, so it was done purposely. Um, I think the, it wasn't, I mean, the, the video was done at a time where it was the Minneapolis sound, but it's so funny because I almost don't hear it as a total Minneapolis sound. It was so much of who I was mm -hmm. that it was a little bit distant from what everybody else is doing, you know? It had a taste of it, but it just sounded like me to me, you know?
there's um, some of the songs that I do in the show that, and it, it depends on what we're gonna, what kind of audience and where we're playing. Um, but I change the lyrics. I mean, I can't. There's a lot of stuff I can say. I like the song, but it's yeah. like, uh, yeah, I can't sing this. And I, so I take, I, we change the lyrics yeah. because the groove is great. Incredible. The best B-side ever. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> There's a lot of good B-sides, but that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Not too much is planned. A lot of it is spontaneous, and uh, it just depends on what I feel like and what I want to do. And but it also depends on the audience. It depends on the venue that we play, how much time. Um, for this this uh, second leg of the tour, since we're out, um, I'm not playing any drums because they said there wasn't any room on the stage, which is a drag for me because I want to play everything. Um, but you know, if there's time where I'll sit in with someone or play drums for a second. So with my timbales this time, since I couldn't have my whole kit, I just put a kick drum and a snare with my timbales. And I haven't done that in a long time, but it gives me something to do. Um, you can send the drummer to the bathroom. No, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. He's good. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's all different. It's all spontaneous. And, you know, we, we have some things planned, but the rest of it is it's never the same. And that's what makes it fun. before the show, um, I will warm up uh, 15 minutes with just stick uh, drumming because I'm getting older and it's harder for me to play. <laughs> and because I don't practice, I've never practiced, so my practice is warming up just hitting the sticks on the chair for 10 or 15 minutes and then, and then we all get together as a band and we pray and then we go on stage. Everybody knows the McCoy little wink. The girls got a lot on her mind. Uh, the experience was kind of crazy. Um, we had never written songs together as a family all these years. We've written for each other, but not together. So um, we had to make sure that everyone had something to say. You know, I couldn't say, we're going to do this. You have to say it, and you know, my dad has to say it. So everyone had take, takes turns in, in giving their opinion. Um, and then we had to figure out what direction we wanted to go with, and because it's my brothers and I, uh, Juan and Peter Michael, with Pops, he listens to Latin jazz and that's his style of music, and his style of music lends to um, more horns in his music, uh, like five-piece horn section. Some of the things that we were writing as kids, his kids, uh, our music doesn't lend to have a lot of horns on the music, so we had to try to make a balance so that it sound like a family and not just here's the young music and here's the older music. You know, we had to find a balance to not leave Pops out of the equation. And he is the foundation of who we are. So that was the icing on the cake. Would you say that it's the most collaborative effort that you ever did? Uh, I, every day is a collaboration. It's the best thing I've ever done. Today at Soundcheck was fun. I mean, it's <laughs> good. I, absolutely. It's, I continue to grow. We all continue to grow. If I just say it was only this, then I'm not doing anything. Every day is a new thing, and that's what's incredible about it. You rock.
on my dad. Really? Yeah, I, he's so the reason. Obviously. Yeah, <laughs> he's the reason why I was play, why I'm playing. Is I mean, I watched him play when I was younger, and I just wanted to do what he was doing. And, and he looked at me like, "You don't want to play these things." And so he uh, uh, requested me to play violin for five years. I took violin, and then his percussion player got sick at 15 and, and I convinced him to let me play the show because I knew all the music because they rehearsed at the house every day. And uh, that was it, that one performance. I said, I'm, I gotta go out on tour with you. This is what I was supposed to do. Um, and, that, and that was it. So after all these years, you're still daddy's girl. I am so daddy's girl, yes. <laughs> I spoke with him yesterday from <laughs> Paris, yes, or from France. When I met Prince, he was doing his first record, so he, 1978, is, I've known him longer than anyone, just about, I mean, and he was in the Bay Area performing, and I went to see him perform, because my dad was playing with Santana then, and he had rec was recording at the same studio they were at. Um, I went backstage and said hello to him. He had already been following my career. He already knew who I was. I wasn't Sheila E then, I was Sheila Escovito and he had been following my career because I was playing with uh, George Duke at the time. And um, so when I finally got to meet him, I was very excited. He's like, I love your work. I love who you are as a musician. And, um, and I invited him to come over to the house and he met the family. And uh, I asked him to come in and watch one of the family shows. And he was just overwhelmed, like, this is crazy that you guys play together like this. And so we've with always- no other audience than yourselves. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, sometimes, and uh, so that's been the that's been the, uh, the the thing that that Prince and I have together is the, is the music, and, and it started with that with our family, and him being able to come in and experience Latin jazz for the first time ever. It was overwhelming. He just didn't know, you know, and that was what's cool about it. So when we started the foundation, we raised money through a lot of the shows that we had done and, and a lot of the shows that we were doing I also started selling my drums right on the spot and then we'd have to rent gear because I was selling all my drums everywhere we went so we could give money to the kids. Um, so we ended up starting the foundation. Uh, right now we started a couple of pilot programs but raising money we use music and arts as therapy for the kids so on the, these pilot programs we started Uh, one was music class to be able to learn how to record your own record, learn how to sing into the computer, garage band, you know, start very simple and allow them to uh, express themselves because that was the, the part about the, the kids in foster care is that they're so abused that they don't talk, they don't communicate, they have nothing to say, they're angry, they're mad all the time and, they, and uh, they hurt people all the time. And so we said through your music, if you're angry, write down what you're angry about and then sing about it or rap about it or make a beat to it and, 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 and teaching that to them with that kind of music that, you know, they're creating their own music and their own sound. It opened up so many doors for them. So a lot of the kids that we've been teaching 
they stopped um, uh, being mean to people. They're, they're, instead of them getting F's, they're getting A's, you know. They're not in, in the... They're starting in confidence. Oh, confidence and support. They feel like, man, no one ever gave us a chance. And you guys, and you and Lynn, Miss Lynn, keep coming back and showing us that you really care about us. And it was about saying, yes, we're going to come back. And they're like, we don't believe you because no one else does. So it's that respect. And we so we respect you. This is yours. You take care of it. You know, we're giving you, this is the, your responsibility. And they said no one ever gives us that kind of responsibility. They don't trust us. At the same time, uh, it's not surprising coming from you because uh, as we understand that, uh, you uh, opened the door for a lot of musicians and new artists coming in and then who after went elsewhere, bigger sure, bigger names. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, it's, it's a part of you that the, the general audience or, or the fans rarely know that you discover people and you push them to be at their best. Yes, absolutely. I love doing that. I love helping people. Mentoring. Yeah, I love being a mentor. It's it's one of my favorite things to do. And uh, to be able to do that because I, I've had so many great mentors in my life beside my dad and Tito Puente and Mongo and anyone who came to the house and George Duke and Billy Cobb and Herbie and they're all my mentors. Everyone that I've worked with has been a mentor to me. And so everything that is good about them that I take to use for me, it's like maybe I can teach someone this or, or I've learned from this or that's something I wouldn't do so uh, let me do it this way, you know. And that's a part of experiencing life and it, it's important. I don't know who it's going to feature yet because we're still working on the music. Um, since we're going to be out, we'll start planning, putting things together. But I've already recorded a lot of songs, and um, I mean, I could put out a record now, but I, I want to experiment and do more, and I want to do more songs that have. Uh, I want to do songs that have more percussion and drumming in it, so it's it's fun and dance danceable. Yeah. See, this lonely time. first said no I was like no nah, we can't do it and I said well we'll see um, I didn't want to do it for specific reasons because I there's I don't want it to be just Sheila E as just that Prince era because I'm more than just that and if I start playing with the time and with F Deluxe it'll become that again and that's not just me so it's a part of my life Um, but we are going to play together. Um, but there's just many different types of music. I want to do gospel music. There's just other stuff that I want to do. So no disrespect to F Deluxe or the original, original seven. seven, yeah, or anything like that, or anybody else. I mean, I just talked to Denise, Ma Denise Matthews the other day, um, who you know as Vanity, and I spoke with her last week and to see how she was doing. So I keep in touch with everyone and. Uh, You know, musically, it's just I, I, there's so many things I want to do, but at first I was reluctant, reluctant to play with them, or to have them to open with us. So. Well, at, at the same time, at the same time, it's an opportunity for you to showcase your other sides, your other musical sides. I'm to, still going to do that. Yeah. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And yeah. show Latin jazz and, and gospel and what you I like. I mean, today we're going to do a little bit of everything, and we're opening for George Clinton. I've known Uncle George, well, he's my Uncle George. <laughs> I know Uncle George forever, since like I was 17 or 18 or something like that. And you never played for him? Never played. opened a show for him. I've sat in with him a gazillion times. I've played with him. We always play and sit in on each other's gigs. And we're very proud that it happens in France. This is a first for me. That's crazy. Cool. I can't wait to see him play tonight. I'm so excited. <laughs> well, that's the good thing about opening, is that after you can watch it. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs>